They say this mountain can be moved They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way through They've heard that I will never change They haven't seen what you can do There is power in your name So much power in your name We know that hope is never lost For there is still an empty grave God, we believe no matter what There is power in your name So much power in your name Start a new revival, fire, all on us. Fire, fire, all on us. Start a new revival, fire, all on us. Like you did on the day of Pentecost, rushing in like a mighty wind. Fill us up with your presence and your power, Lord, do it again. We are here crying out on one accord, let the heavens touch the earth. Come and light a passion in our heart, and Lord, let it burn. Ooh, fire, fire, all on us, start a new revival. Consume us with your love Give us more and more of who you are We can't get enough Hey, fire, fire Fall on us Start a new revival Fire, fall on us Everybody sing it Fire, fire
Start a new revival Fire All on us Hi children, welcome once again to another beautiful Sunday. I hope you have been enjoying the service so far. Good. And I hope that um, you remember what we learned last week, right? Can someone remind me what, of what we learned last week? Yes, we talked about diligence. Letting your light shine through diligence. And can somebody also remind me what diligence is all about? What does it mean to be diligent? Yes, that's true. Diligence is an attitude that drives us to accomplish whatever task that we have been given or whatever that we want to do to the best of our ability and successfully. So this week, we'll be, talki- we'll be talking about being humble, letting our light shine through humility. But before we go right in, let's say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we give you glory, Lord. We honor you for another opportunity in your presence. We thank you for another privilege to learn at your feet, O Lord. Father, we thank you, King of Glory, for what you're doing in our lives, what you're doing in our families, what you're doing in your church. Father, we give you glory, Lord. We honor you. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for great and mighty things that you're doing for us. Father, King of glory, as we go into your word today, Father, Lord, we pray that you go with us, O Lord. We pray, King of glory, that everything that we'll be learning today, Lord, Father, that we will make use of it, O Lord, even to the best of our ability, even to the glorification of your kingdom, and to the exaltation of your name, the beautification of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, for another opportunity. Be thou exalted, be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Welcome once again, children. So today, like I said, we'll be talking about humility, letting our light shine through humility. What is it to be humble? Can anyone tell me? Can you tell me what it means to be humble? Anyone? What does it mean to be humble? Okay. Humility is the, is the quality of being humble. The virtue of humility is the quality or condition of being humble, modest, not having an opinion or estimate of one's own importance or rank. Humility always occurs in the absence of pride. There is no way you can be proud and be humble at the same time. It means that we put people's needs ahead of us. You know, we think of others before ourselves. Being a humble person means that we spend our lives taking care of others. Humility is a personal quality where somebody shows the dependence on God. Someone who completely trusts in God and respects others. You know, humility can mean that we acknowledge that we're not always right. Always owning to our mistakes and always apologizing when we're wrong. So as we go forth today, let us try to live a life of humility. Let us be humble in whatever we do. Okay, children? So as we go, Jesus Christ also di- displayed um, humility. He displayed acts of humility. Can anyone remind me one of it? One of Jesus Christ was humble throughout his time here on earth. But there was a particular thing that we, he did in the Bible that he, he, he kind of encouraged us even as leaders to be humble. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ washed his, his disciples' feet. After washing their feet, he cleaned his, their feet. If you know how, um, you know, back in those days, people walked around with like slippers and Jesus Christ went on his knees and washed his disciples' feet. There's no, there's no um, evidence of humility more than that. For you to lower yourself, even as a leader, to, you know, to wash your, your disciples' feet, that is a great act of humility. Let us read, let us, um, read the Bible uh, memory verse for today. Our memory verse for today is 1 Peter 5.5. 5, and it says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another clothed with humility for god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble there's always a saying that pride goes before fall anyone who is proud is always going to um 
be disappointed and you know they they always they always disgraced and humiliated so we should not be proud in any way at all we should always be humble let us also go to our bible text today our bible text today is john 13 1 to 15. it's a long read and i'll take us through it john 13 verses 1 to 15. let's go now before the feast of passover when jesus knew that his hour had come and he should depart from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come to God and was going to God, he had come from God and was going to God, rose up from supper and laid aside his garment, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered to, and said to him, What am I doing? You do not under, what I am doing you do not understand now but you would know after this. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash your feet, then you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, he who is bated needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you for a new who would betray him. Therefore he said, you are all clean. So when he had washed the feet, when he had washed their feet, taking, taking his garment and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. But if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So like I said, Jesus Christ showed the greatest act of humility by washing his disciples' feet. And that is what he said in verse 15, that I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you, showing us that even as he said, as I for high that you call Lord and teacher, I've washed your feet. So if high that I am your Lord and I'm your teacher, can you know humble myself and get down and wash your feet, then I have I'm telling you now that you should be and do like that as well. Be humble and show humility in all that you, in all that you do so who should be humble if you ask me in my opinion all of us should be humble every follower of christ should be humble and god loves and delights in the humble first peter 1 first peter 5 5 tells us that let's go into the book into the book of first peter chapter 5 verse 5 let's see what it tells us 1 Peter 5, 5 says, In the same way, who you are younger must accept authority of your elders, and all of you dress yourself in humility as you relate with one another. Do you remember that was our memory verse? Yes. So, we should dress ourselves in humility. We should be humble in everything that we do. The Bible tells us that God is close to the humble. God requires us to be humble. God exalts us to be humble. Matthew 23 um, verse 12 says, God exalts those that are humble. Psalm 9 verse 12 says, God helps the humble. And for us to avoid God's wrath, we have to be humble. That is, um, let's check that out in 2 Chronicles chapter 32 verse 26 second chronicles chapter chapter 32 
verse 26. Let us see how God how God should um, how we can avoid God's wrath wrath by being humble. Second Chronicles chapter 32 verse 26 and I'll read. Then Ezekiah humbled himself and repented of his pride and as as did the people of Jerusalem. So the Lord's anger did not fall on them during Ezekiah's time. You know, Ezekiah was very healed and he prayed to God to heal him and God gave him a miraculous sign to heal him and give him a miraculous sign. But Ezekiah did not respond appropriately, appropriately to the kindness shown him. He became proud. So God's anger came against him and against Judah and Jerusalem. But when Ezekiah humbled himself and repented of his pride, verse 26 tells us that God's anger did not fall on him. So there is great gain when we are humble. We avoid God's wrath when we are humble. When we are humble, we have wisdom and not shame. The Bible tells us that God exalts the humble and hum- when we are humble, we, 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 are, we are wise and we are not put to shame. God will lift you up when you are humble. James 4.10 says that. James 4.10 tells us that, that the Lord will lift us up when we are humble. The Lord lifts us up when we are humble. James 4 10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up in honor. Again, humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up in honor. Can you repeat that for me? Humble yourself, and God will lift you up in honor. Let's see what Psalm 37 verse 11 says about hum- being humble. It says that we shall inherit the, the, the hurt. From 36, verse 30, um, Psalm 37 says, Soon the wicked will disappear. Though you look for them, they will be gone. The lowly will possess the land, which means the humble will possess the land and live in peace and prosperity. So if you ask me, we have everything to gain when we are humble. When we are humble, God gives us riches, honor, and long life. Let's continue in our, mess- in, our, in, our, in our topic today. So what are the characteristics of the humble? Anyone who is humble trusts in the sovereignty of God. They are thankful. They are in awe of God's goodness and grace towards them. They rejoice with others. They are happy when people are happy. You know, they practice unity based on their salvation. When we are humble, we are not wise in our own eyes. We forgive quickly because we know that God has forgiven us much too. And a humble person has a teachable spirit. They want to learn more. They do not believe that they know it all. When you act like a know-it-all, then that means you're proud. You're not humble. A humble person has a teachable spirit. They build others up and they have a servant heart. That's the, let's read what that means in Galatians 5, 13 to 14. The Bible tells us that a humble one of the characteristics of a humble person is that they have a servant's heart. And let's read that from the Galatians 5, 13 to 14. Galatians 5, 13 to 14. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another. For the whole law can be summed up in one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, when we are humble, 
we love our neighbor as ourselves. Being humble from what we can see and compassive that we love God with our whole heart, our mind, and our soul, and we would also love our neighbors just the way we love ourselves. So what are the rewards of being humble, if you ask me? Humility leads to exaltation. We've heard that before. Now Job 5.11 also tells us that humility, humility that's being humble, leads to exaltation. Let's see what Job 5.11 says. And it reads, It gives prosperity to the humble and protects those who suffer. I'll read it in another um, translation. It says that it sets on high those who are lowly and those who mourn are lifted to safety. God sets on high those who are humble. When you are humble, you are exalted. When you are humble, you are honored by Christ himself. Bible tells us in Matthew verse 3, sorry, Matthew chapter 3 verse 14, that Jesus himself ruled, honor those that are humble. Let's read it. Matthew 3 verse 14. And he reads, But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. He said so. He said, so why are you coming to me? This was when um, Jesus went to John the Baptist to be baptized. You know, Jesus in the hierarchy of things is way above John. But he went to John the Baptist to be baptized because of his humility. Right? And John was like, no. I'm not the one to do that. You're supposed to baptize me because you are God in, in, in human form. I do not have that authority to baptize you, to baptize you rather. But Jesus Christ told him to go ahead. So Jesus Christ honored John the Bap Bap Baptist himself by letting him baptize him who is God in human form. Christ dwells in the humble. Isaiah 57, let's read Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57 verse 15, it says that Jesus Christ humbles the, the, dwells in the humble. Isaiah 57 verse 15, and I read, the high and lofty one who lives in eternity, the holy one says, I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and revive the courage of those with repentant hearts. Can I read that again? That is and that is profound that is a profound scripture it says the high and lofty one who lives in eternity that is christ our savior the holy one and he says this that i live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble i restore the crush spirit of the humble and revive the courage with the courage of those with repentant hearts. Like we said earlier, if you remember, being humble is also knowing when you're wrong and taking ownership of our mistakes, apologizing when we are wrong and being sorry for any wrong thing that we're doing or that we've done. When we are humble, we're satisfied, right? We're not selfish, we're not greedy, when we are humble, we have rest. We are at peace. And the Bible tells us in Matthew 18, Matthew 18, verse 4 to 7. Matthew 18, verse 4 to 7. The, the Bible tells us that 
the humble will be considered greatest in the kingdom of God. Let's read that. So anyone who becomes humble as these little children is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it will be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. So what is he saying? You know how little babies just trust completely? How they just, you know, they, are, they, they, they know nothing. So they are so humble in their way. Jesus Christ says we should, be, we should be humble just like that. And that will be considered the greatest in the kingdom of God. When we are humble, God gives us grace. We inherit the earth and have peace when we are humble. So how can you show humility? Can someone tell me? Let's look. By being born again. By confessing and allowing the Lord God, Jesus Christ, over our life always. And by submitting to one another out of reverence for God. We show humility when we practice brotherly love. Let's read some of the scriptures. Um, let's read Philippians, Philippians 2, Philippians 2, verse 5 to 8. What does it say? It says that we must have the same attitude as Christ Jesus had. We have established that Jesus Christ was humble throughout his time here on earth. And he displayed humility throughout in everything that he did. Jesus Christ was humble. So the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, that we should have the same attitude as Christ. That though he was, he was God, he did not think of equal, equal, equality with God as something to cling to. You know, Jesus Christ is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He came down to this earth. And though he was God, he did not cling to that. He did not lord, he did not lord it over everyone. He did not brag about it, even though he could have. But in, 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 in his humility, in his humble way, he didn't do that. He was even born in a manger, right from his birth. Jesus Christ showed humility. The Bible tells us that he was born in a lowly manger. He was born to a carpenter. He could have come into a rich family. But Jesus Christ needed to show us what being humble means. And right from his first, you know, first existence here on earth, he showed humility. Let's continue reading. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, the Bible tells us that God elevated him to the highest honor and gave him a name that is above every other name, the name Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that God elevates the humble and this is what we read here. So, Ephesians 5, 21 2. Let's see what Ephesians 5, 21 says about being humble. Ephesians 5, 21. He says that we should submit. How, that is part of how we show humility, right? That we should submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So, 
do we have biblical examples of people who are humble? Let's check them out. Let's see. Jesus Christ, like we have established, showed humility in every way and form throughout his existence here on earth. Like we read in the previous um, Bible passage, Philippians 2, 5 to 11, shows us that Jesus Christ, even though he was God, came down to earth in human form. He was born in a lowly manger to a carpenter. And he never loved the fact that he was God. He never hung on to it. Moses also is an example of people, of someone in the Bible that was humble. The Bible tells us in, the Bible tells us in, in the book of Numbers, sorry, the book of Numbers, let's read that. Chapter, chapter 12, verse 3. Let's see what the Bible tells us about Moses being an example of a humble person in the Bible. It says, now Moses was very humble, more humble than any other person on earth. At the time when Moses was here on earth, the Bible recorded that Moses was very humble and that there was nobody on earth at that time that was more humble than Moses. And so God elevated him. God made him the, the, the apostle, the head priest. When the Israelites left Egypt and were on their way to the promised land. The Bible also tells us that John the Baptist is an example. Another example in the Bible is John the Baptist. John 3, let's read that. John 3.30. John 3.30 says, that he must become greater and greater and I become less and less. This was John when he was talking about Jesus Christ. Let's start from verse 27 to give us a context about this. So I think people came to him, his disciples, and, and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, the one that you had identified as Messiah, is also baptizing people and everybody is going to him. This was after John baptized um, Jesus Christ, you know, and then Jesus Christ was baptizing people after that. And John replied to his disciples, no one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. Verse 28, you yourself know how plainly I told you that I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the bridegroom's friend is simply glad to stand with him, hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. That is humility. John the Baptist knew his position. He knew where he stood when it comes to Jesus Christ. And he, he took that position that Jesus Christ must become greater and greater while he becomes less and less. There was no pride in him. John the Baptist was humble. Apostle Paul is also an example in the Bible of someone who is humble, who showed humility. Acts chapter 20 verse 19 tells us that, Acts chapter 20 verse 19, Apostle Paul was saying here, I have done the Lord's work humbly with many tears. I have endured trials that came to me from the plot of the Jews. This was Apostle Paul giving account of how he was doing the work of the gospel with humility. And that even with all the trials and tribulations, 
he still did the work with humility. Philippians 3, Philippians 3, 4 to 7 also tells us here, Apostle Paul also tells us, he was also speaking here, that I once thought these things were valuable. He was talking about, about who he was. Let's start from verse 5. He says, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew, if there was ever one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest, strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I actually persecuted the church. As for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. And then he said in verse 7, I once thought these things were valuable. That's everything that he, had said, that he said. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage. So that I can gain Christ. When we are humble, we gain Christ. Joseph also is another example of someone who was humble in the Bible. Joseph, let's read about Joseph. In Genesis 50 verse 20. Genesis 50 verse 20 says, When Joseph met with his brothers, you know, he was already the prime minister in Egypt and his brother came because there was famine in Canaan and you know he could have decided to take vengeance of, on them be, considered considering what they did to him they sold him into slavery right I'm sure you remember the story of Joseph and his brothers but he told them don't be afraid of me this is um, verse 19 am I God that I can punish you and he said in verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of my people. So we have learned that Jesus Christ, Moses, John the Baptist, Paul the Apostle, and Joseph were all by biblical examples of people who lived lives of humility. They were humble. So how do we apply our humility in, in our everyday life? Without humility, we cannot repent of our sins and our sins to God. The truth of the matter is, if you are proud, you will not even, you will not even consider yourself a sinner. You not admit any wrongdoing because you would always think that you're right, right? So God looks at the proud from afar. So therefore, Please, in everything that we do, let's live a life of humility. Let's be humble. And the only way that we can we can have that we can have the grace to be humble is to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Because Jesus Christ is humble, so when He comes into our lives, He leads us in a way to live a life of humility. When we have Christ in us, our we shine. We shine through humility. We live our life through humility, right? So in conclusion, my dear children, humility is the bedrock of greatness. And there can be a lot of confusion that surrounds it. Oftentimes, humility is associated with quietness, weakness, submission, and it's thought of as maybe you're, you're inadequate. However, that's not being humble. Humility is of God. Jesus Christ is humble. And because we need to follow in the footsteps of Christ as Savior, we also, as children of God, need to live a life of humility. We need to live a humble life. I hope you understand, you, 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 you've gained um, 
a lot from what we have discussed today. And going forward, if there's anything that seems like pride in our lives, we will do away with it. Ask God to help us so that we can live a life of humility. We can be humble in everything that we do. We show people, we live humbly as children of God. Thank you. God bless you. Amen.